what do we do in the event that somebody in our cohort, whether it's a teacher, a staff, or a student uh, becomes infected? How do we deal with this effectively? Uh, what are the procedures and what are the steps that will be taken and how will they proceed? Uh, thank you very much and I am going to turn to Superintendent Slater and Zen. I will just make a couple of introductory comments and that is when we were required to develop models, we were required to develop a conventional, an adaptive and a remote model. And the purpose of doing this is so that we could pivot quickly from one to another. So for example, if we had an outbreak in a class or a school, that we could close that school to our conventional model and pivot immediately to a remote model. That is the purpose for designing those three models and they were designed so that we could bridge from one to the other easily. But I would like to turn to Mr. Slater and Mr. Zen, if you could comment at all, because apart from educationally pivoting from conventional to remote ostensibly overnight. If you could just make a couple of comments in response to Trustee Foley about outbreak protocols and outbreak measures. Sure, uh, Trustee Foley, it's Mr. Slater. Um, we, so there's, a, there's a number of different things. When, in, when we have a regular school day happening, if a, if we, if we have a student who is presenting with some symptoms, uh, we, we'll have a process in place for that. That isn't an identification of COVID by any means, but it's just uh, checking out to make sure the student is okay. So we'll have a protocol in place where they're isolated, they go home, uh, hopefully get testing, and then uh, we move on from there. Public health has assured us uh, that, that largely they're going to know about any possible uh, actual COVID cases before we do. They do the testing, they'll get the results, and they will inform us of those. And, and quite honestly, at that point, then it is simply following the direction of public health. They will do the contact tracing that's necessary. We will have records of where students, when they've been at school, so attendance, but also where they will be, who will have come into contact with those classes. So we'll provide them with that information and they will take it from there. Uh, so we will follow their direction in terms of whether there's anything um, long-term, short-term, or otherwise that we need to do in terms of that follow-up. Uh, but Director Rogers is right. We do have uh, all three plans ready to go. And so we're starting with conventional. If things go badly and COVID becomes a problem, or even if there is a situation where it's in one school and, and there's a requirement to change, uh, then we will uh, switch to the other form of learning, which I'm guessing would be remote initially and then uh, move from there. So we we do have schools making some plans from the very beginning of the year so that we will have an, a knowledge of who will need technology. So the distribution of technology will go much quicker than it would have back in March and April. Uh, we'll have um, uh, schools that are in class also having their Google Classroom set up and they will use those from the beginning of the year, not for daily instruction the way it happened online in the spring, but definitely for uh, various things that can happen such as communication with families, for homework posting, those kinds of things. So uh, students and families will be very familiar and continue to be familiar with the Google, the Google uh, environment. And so we'll have some things like that in place so the transition to um, say online learning for everybody will will go much quicker and be much smoother than it did uh, back in the spring. I guess a follow-up question. Trustee oh, Foley. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, a follow-up question to that uh, Superintendent Slater would be: So, should a person test positive, does the whole cohort, including the staff that are involved in that cohort, go into isolation until uh, there's a determination? Um, Madam Chair, the um, first call would be to Dr. Mercer's office, to the Medical Officer of Health, and we will take our guidance from public health the minute that there would be any case of COVID, either in a student or a staff. And I, I think 
Superintendent Slater, you can confirm um, if I'm off base here, but I do believe that we have worked out with them that they will be provide, providing the guidance to us and we will do as we're told. But Superintendent Slater, if you could comment, please. No, that's exactly right. Uh, they will absolutely be taking the lead on any of that. That's where their expertise is. Ours is not, so uh, that's exactly what would happen. Okay, that uh, pretty well wraps up my questions. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.